Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, Parlor, and Instagram. And of course, be sure to visit www.mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. My mother, she would say to me, you know, what are you going to do with yourself, Michael? What are you going to do? There's nothing that just hit me that I wanted to do. I wanted to be Rocky. That's what I wanted to be. We'd have our conversations at night. She's going, Mike, how are we going to get this kid to realize he's got to get his education? We were kept saying, oh, he's going to put money together. He's going to go to college and he's going to do all that stuff. I, I did try. I had like 25 or 30 jobs. Sometimes... We don't know where Rocky ends and Mike begins. Nothing ever held my focus. I was, I was afraid that he was taking so many shots from everybody. <laughs> he was becoming better at his fantasy. When you go home at the end of the day, can you live with yourself? Did you do the best that you could? And that's the message I got when I was a kid. And most days I didn't. Most days, I was so aggravated and frustrated with myself. But when it comes to this, I feel like I could do anything. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 313. Available on digital and on demand is The Pretender, a documentary that tells the story of Pennsylvania man Mike Kunda and his lifelong obsession with Sylvester Stallone, especially the Rocky movies from which Mike has found inspiration in an unexpected career as a Rocky impersonator. A fascinating look into how one movie can forever alter the direction of a man's life. The Pretender is a must-watch not only for Rocky fans, but for everyone who has ever been inspired by an art form and are willing to pursue their passion no matter what it is and where it takes them. Joining me now to talk about The Pretender is the film's director, Jim Toscano. Jim, I thank you very much for talking to me today. Thanks, you, Matthew. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So it's really interesting. I came across your film on Facebook. There was a post about it. I was like, i got to check this out. I was saying to you off air, anything Rocky comes up in my brain, i got to check it out straight away. It's one of my favourite movies of all time. So happy that I watched it as well. I'm just curious, though, how did you find out about, about Mike Kunda and about his whole obsession with Rocky? Is, was he known as a bit of a uh, celebrity of any sort or in America at the time that you found out about him? No, he wasn't. Now he's, he is. Now he is kind of well-known. Um, but no, back when I found him, it was it was a long time ago. It was about 10 years ago. And it was just a, a chance um, coincidence that I ran into him. Uh, I was working in Pennsylvania, actually in Philadelphia, which is like the, the rocky land. And uh, I was working and I had the weekend off and was just kind of downtown sightseeing. And they were filming uh, one of the Rocky movies uh, later that night. Uh, they were filming, but I was there during the daytime and Mike was there kind of hanging out on set, basically waiting to see if, you know, see when and if Sylvester Stallone would arrive. So I kind of mm-hmm. spotted him there. And, and um, even back then, he, he sort of looked like Stallone and he sort of acted like Stallone. So I was kind of drawn to that, like, well, you know, what's, what's going on here? And we struck up a conversation and uh, I knew he would. He was a, a special, a unique guy right away. So I heard in a previous interview you done that your initial idea in regards to doing stuff with Mike was something short, five, ten minutes, short kind of film. Um, how did that kind of expand into the feature we see now? Yeah, I was just getting into filmmaking and I thought, you know, let me, you know, I wasn't that experienced. So I thought, let me find a really good story and and film that actually i met mike first and i thought you know he's got a really good story let me just shoot five minutes with him you know get a little five minute video cut down a little mini doc uh i i thought he was interesting enough to where if um if my skills didn't didn't uh uh you know live up at least i had to have a good story to tell you know people would stay engaged for a couple minutes and watch what i had to to show them but um but once I went down there with the intentions of shooting for five minutes, 
it all changed pretty quickly. I mean, but it, it definitely changed when I met his parents um, and just saw like, you know, how real this was, you know, mm-hmm. in my head, I'm thinking I, it can't be, he can't really have been a Rocky fan since he was nine years old. You know, mm-hmm. it, there had to be this, it has to be exaggerated. I thought, but whatever. But when I went down there, it was it lived up to my wildest dreams. I mean, like, there was such dedication and you see it in the film. Like there's proof basically that, you know, he has seen this movie over 500 times and, you know, uh, but the turning point was I interviewed his parents and uh, they poured their hearts out to me on camera, which you'll see in the film. And uh, you know, when I was leaving the first day uh, his dad, you know, pulled me aside and slapped me on the back and said, you know, we, we are so, thankful uh that you see something in our son and that um you know you want to tell his story we can't wait to see this film you know and then so when he did that it was like oh no pressure right you know (laughs) (laughs) so that that really did it that's when I knew I couldn't squander it on a little you know quick five minute thing like we needed to really take our time and and make a tell Mike's story as a filmmaker yourself Jim where are you at um, in your life, in your career, um, have you done stuff already before? Have you already worked on shorts or, or any other type of film? Or is this kind of the first time you put in your foot in the deep end? Yeah, this this was our our first feature feature length documentary. Um, I'm in Detroit, Michigan, and we have a, a production company here that we mainly do a lot of automotive work. You know, because mm. we're in Detroit, we do a lot of commercial work. Uh, for Ford, uh, Chrysler, GM, General Motors, um, and we do uh, so. We do a lot of that. This was our first feature length doc, and we also have done some uh, feature length docs since then uh, for PBS uh, here in in uh, you know public broadcasting here in in Detroit. Uh, but but since the Pretender came out, uh, there has been a couple other opportunities that came up for some new documentaries and, uh, and something that we're, we're already working on already. You know, when you approach Mike with this idea and it turns into what it's going to eventually going to turn into, what's his initial reaction uh, to your pitch? I mean, is he more than willing to share this story or is any sort of kind of like hesitation on his part um, considering that, you know, this is a really kind of unique kind of thing. I mean, you have your, Star Wars fanatics, you have your Star Trek fanatics, you don't really, you know, come across someone kind of like Mike to the extent of being the Rocky fan that he is. What's his kind of a, 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 his reaction to your pitch as to film his life and tell his story? Well, I, it, overall, he, he was like uh, very eager, like, yes, yes, come down, come down, let's, let's shoot, let's do this, let's do that. To, to a point where I was even, um, surprised by it you know like the, you'll see in the film there's a part where he talks about uh rambo and his, mm. you know he kind of had a little time period where it switched over to rambo and and uh me and danny janino my my partner here at the at the production company i said you know it'd be kind of cool to you know get him in the in the woods and and talk about you know i said i don't know he you know i'm thinking he might um be hesitant or like no nah, i don't, I don't want to share that i don't want to go to this park but, you know, as soon as I asked him, he's, yeah, let's go. Let, yeah, I'll show you around. I'll show you around the park. I'll show you what I did. I used to light little fires and, you know, this and that. And I, he was very open, always, always willing to, uh, to do, to do something to, for us to let, let to, to let us in basically. You know, it's interesting you just mentioned the Rambo thing there, because a lot of people are going to be introduced to the film with the whole, the Rocky part of it all. Um, the extent of his obsession, though, to all things to learn goes way beyond that. You mentioned the Rambo thing. He had a tango and cash phase, and who knew anyone could ever have a tango and cash phase? Um, he also had, like, the whole Get Carter thing as well, um, yeah. with the silver suit and everything. Um, when you realise that his obsession it went beyond Rocky and, like, just went all across the spectrum of everything Stallone, what's your reaction to that? Um, it, that's a good question. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it, like surprising, you know, it, it was it, it, like I said earlier, like it lived up to what 
he kind of portrayed, you know, when I would talk to him, like, you know, oh, I'm the biggest Stallone fan. I'm, I'm, I'm this and that. It was, uh, you know, surprising. It was impressive in a way, you know? Um, and you know, all like when I met him, I mean, it is, it seems crazy, you know, like even his wife says in the film, like, you know, he's, it does seem crazy, but then you think about like sports fanatics, or you think about like an accountant that loves his job and, uh, you know, all he thinks about is numbers and, you know, things like that. So it was, it was relatable though. You know what I mean? It, mm. it was definitely like shocking. I guess that's the word. It was shocking, but in ways relatable, you know? Yeah. And I think, what did you think? What did you I mean, think? the thing that I took from the movie after watching it is that he pursued his passion. And like you said, your passion could be anything. Like you yourself, you're pursuing a career as a filmmaker. I'm trying to pursue a career as a film critic. These are not conventional jobs in any in any matter of the way. Any, you know, I'm sure when I don't know what it was like for you, but when I was growing up, my parents have said, "Hey, become a film critic," and, and you know, and struggle to get like 15 cents a word or what have you. You know, this is the stuff that we have a passion for. And I really love people. I'm really inspired by people who really follow their passion, no matter where it takes them, and no matter the struggles. And I think what makes the story so endearing as well is that Mike really comes across, and 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 I'm sure you can attest to this, that he comes across as a really endearing person. I mean, the, the stuff like I, I mentioned before, the whole Star Wars, Star Trek kind of approach to fanaticism. Whenever I talk to people in that kind of world, sometimes there seems to be a certain amount of cynicism or a hard edge to it. Yeah. Um, when I think in my, in my, you you might be able to answer this for me that I think a lot of it how Mike kind of approaches his own kind of fanaticism towards the whole Rocky thing is that the character himself has a humbleness to him, um, and it's it's based upon hard work and it's based upon drive and it's based upon all these kind of things. Do you think that having him be having his role model in his uh, uh, guide to life, be the Rocky character. That goes a long way to kind of framing who Mike is as a person, considering that character's humbleness and approach to hard work and, and the like. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's a great point. I don't think anyone has really articulated that like like you just did. But but yeah, there is. It is definitely uh, his role model, and I think that is what keeps Mike humble. Like uh, you know, since the film came out. You know, I think he's gotten a little bit more notoriety, mm. but I I know, you know, me covering him for years, I know that he probably thinks, you know, I could lose the next fight. You know, I could lose, you know, it's it's like, uh, he, so I think he definitely, that persona of Rocky definitely guides him and guides his, his humbleness. You know, when I was filming it, it was funny because I, it really quickly, it I could see that uh, the Rocky, the Rocky world was like a religion to him, to mm. him and to other people, like a, a religion or a nationality, you know, like would Rocky do that? You know, like would Jesus do that? What would Jesus do? What would Rocky do kind of thing? But what what cracked me up is like, um, you know, I'm, I'm an Italian American. So my grandparents were, you know, immigrated from Italy. And whenever you need, um, you know, electrical work done or plumbing or a realtor, like my mom would say, call this guy. He, he, he's a great plumber, good prices, and he's Italian, mm. you know, to, and that's how Mike is with Rocky. So he would tell me like, hey, Jim, you know, who's a good, uh, you know, podcaster is, is this guy. He's very good. He's, and he's a Rocky fan. Like every, you know, every little thing would end with, and he's a Rocky fan, you know? So it, they're definitely, I, to answer your question, yeah, he definitely takes Rocky's lead and how he kind of shapes his, his uh, actions. And the interesting thing about that character is that it, it kind of encompasses a lot of different things. I mean, it's not just a, 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 a movie. It's, it was a movement in many ways. I think a lot of something that really, you can talk to a boxing person or a boxer and they can tell you that that film inspired them to follow their sport, for example. Um, you know, yeah. I'm sure after the first time you watch Rocky, all you want to do is one arm push ups and punch something, you know, <laughs> it's, and I think that's still something that kind of resonates with a lot of people. Um, Jim, what about yourself? Do you remember your first Rocky experience? Is that a movie that you as a filmmaker, you take a lot of inspiration from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, 
there's an Italian American thing in there also, but I do remember like uh, the first time I saw a Rocky movie was Rocky three. Mm. And it was with my brothers, like in, in the house, you know, I came on cable. I, I'm uh, 43 years old now. So I wasn't there when the first one came out, but I remember sitting there with my two older brothers and them kind of like introducing it to me, you know, like here's Rocky, you're going to love this, you know? And uh, it is like a, you know, a big part of uh, our family, sort of, you know, like in that way, like, hey, Rocky was on the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, nothing is as far as Mike's, but but yeah, it was definitely something that was always there. And then when I went back and watched, you know, the first Rocky, I, I really can't remember the first time that I saw it, but it's for a long time been one of my top three favorite movies for sure. I mean, it is like, it's the perfect... I would say it's the original and perfect uh, independent film, yeah. you know, because it is like just it's a it's a short film. You know, it's not that long. It's it's got a very straightforward story. It's got a little bit of everything in it. It's a it's a love story. It's an underdog story. It's a boxing film. It, there's a, a little bit of mafia tie in it. I mean, there's just has and it was made on the shoestring budget. So for many reasons, it's it's one of my top three films, definitely. And I think something that's really important about that film, and, and, and I know you mentioned before um, the connection with the Italian American heritage. So my background is Croatian, and Croatia is like right across the like almost neighbors to Italy. Um, so yeah. I'm from that e- region of the world. But I think a lot of people that come from kind of migrant families, especially from Europe, really take to the Rocky Balboa character because at that time, and even still to this day, a lot of people presented from Europe or whatever are kind of presented kind of like. Um, criminal kind of acts and you know there's the whole mafia thing sometimes and there's well in, in the case of my uh my um, background you know we recently had a war in croatia like 20 years ago so that kind of like has that but this is like an inspiring story of a guy who came from a european background um he's living the american dream and i think that goes a long way as well yeah absolutely uh, absolutely it's just this you know this underdog story of like no matter how bad things are around you you can you can rise up you know and and for mike that was that was just him being kind of a a lost kid with you know with without much direction and getting kind of picked on as a kid and uh this this became his uh you know way that his family bonded and the way he got through things throughout his life very true yeah yeah you know um rocky has his adrian Mike yeah. has a very, very supportive wife as well. Um, you know, I think a lot of when you get married, you take on your, you know, your partner's baggage in a lot of ways. And Mike, Mike has a lot of it in the form of like, you know, uh, Rocky memorabilia and everything else that comes with it. And and he, and he becomes to learn in such a, an easy way. It's, it's kind of, um, I'm taken back sometimes that sometimes he kind of adapts to the mannerisms of that Stallone has. It's not like a the impression that he does isn't huge. It's like these little kind of things that kind of build up to a to a to a complete kind of whole. Um, and I really love the way he approaches it. And I'm sure for his wife, it it would have been something to to get used to. Uh, she met him though during his Rambo phase. Is that is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know she says in the movie she liked the long hair and the the look of him. So yeah, she she met him then and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been. I think they went to high school together. So mm. no, they went, right after high school they met. So yeah, they they have known each other for a long time. And and she's there, she's there by his side, like you said, a hundred percent. I mean, I she gets, you know, when we first started filming, uh, we went around. I mean, she was excited, yeah, just as as excited as he was. I mean, it was even more sometimes. Really, I, I thought like, wow, she's she's almost into this more than, than Mike sometimes. Uh, But, but back to your, your mannerisms uh, uh, mention is that uh, Frank Stallone, which is, uh, you know, Sylvester Stallone's brother. Yes. He he and I have been communicating a lot. We actually hung out a couple times. uh, One time during his, his film, it just uh, premiered at the Philly film festival. And we got to hang out for a while and have a couple beers together. And he, He went on and on. He said, you know, he saw the film and he said, Mike's mannerisms are 
so close to his brothers that it blows him away. He, you know, and he went on and on. He said the way he puts his hands, the way he walks, the gape in his walk, you know, the, the way he puts his hand on his hip and this and that. And I definitely see it too, but it was really cool to see Sylvester Stallone's brother say that, you know, Mm. he said, he said far and away, Mike is the best Rocky uh, impersonator. And I think it is because of those, those small things. It's not overdone. It's not, it's not a joke. You know, it's very serious. Everything Mike does Rocky related has like this kind of a a more serious tone to it. And there's a impersonator or something like that. And there's a sincerity to it as well. I think as well, um, the way he approaches it. Um, You know, it's, I talk to a lot of independent filmmakers, both in the States from the States and here in Australia. And um, it's one thing to, to make a movie. It's another thing to get your film out there. Um, distribution. And, you know, these days there are so many avenues to get your film out there. It doesn't mean it's not difficult to, to do that, though. Um, for yourself, Jim, trying to get your movie out on these platforms, and for people listening, you can watch the film on Amazon Prime, you can watch on iTunes, available video on demand. In Australia, you can watch it on Tubi. To get it on these platforms, especially something like Amazon Prime, what is that experience like? Is it even more difficult than the five years that you put into making the film in the first place? Yeah, I think so. I was just talking to another filmmaker yesterday about it too. And, you know, when it's your first time out of the gate, everything's new, you know, for me, everything was new trying to figure out, you know, how does this even work? How does it get out there? Um, You know, who can you trust? And, and, you know, so it was, it's a whole nother world. And I would definitely say it was harder than actually making the film and and it was fun it was less fun than making it but there was still some you know some fun in in the discovery of like how does this work but um yeah and then you know even when you know it, it's tough it, it's i wish someone uh i wish i had a mentor that said do this don't do this call this guy call that guy but i had to kind of piece it all together from from filmmakers that i knew had some success um, and, and we did get a, you know, luckily enough, we did get a distribution deal, uh, with Gravitas and, uh, but even with that, like you still have to, it's still your, your baby. You still have to be the guy that says, Hey, let's, let's try and get it on this platform. Let's try and get on that platform. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, even like, uh, Sylvester Stallone himself, uh, did a little Instagram post about our film. Cause he, he liked it. And he said like, you know, if you're a Rocky fan, you should check this out. So even like, when Stallone did that, I had to, you know, then take his post, send it to the distribution company and say, Hey, Stallone just said this, you know, let's, let's, let's build on this. So you have to, you have to really stay on your film, you know, throughout the whole process. That's Stallone endorsement. I can't even imagine what that would have done for yourself as a, as a filmmaker getting your film out there. But to someone like Mike, who who clearly had, um, idolizes Stallone in such a big way, business wise though, yeah. you, I'm sure that in the process of getting your film out there and after the films, I think it was released back what May, April of this year. Is that right? Uh, it was actually it was November. It was it was the end of last year? Uh-huh. I think it was the end of last year, and then back in the spring, uh, that's when it went we did a deal with Amazon where, you know, they, uh, where it was free. And that happened to be right about the time Stallone saw it and posted about it. And then also when the pandemic just started, so that all happened all at the same time. So that's when it, you know, there was a nice, uh, kickoff. We were like top 50, I think on iTunes. I know we ranked on iTunes when it first got released. Uh, but then in the spring, then it really took off because people, you know, finally got to hear about it, to, to know about it. That was the, that's the other thing that's kind of tough is just getting the word out. I'm very sure then that there was a pre Stallone and post Stallone kind of phase of this, of the movie in, in its release. And as soon as he puts that post out there, you can clearly see bumping numbers, et cetera. And I'm sure you would have seen a lot of media inquiries as well. Oh, totally. It was, it was it was so much fun. It was so insane and so much fun. Like, you know, I think, uh, I I woke up the next morning and I could tell by looking at my phone, like, Oh, something happened. Mm. And then the, the whole, I'd say the next five days to a week 
were pretty insane with, you know, social media and inquiries, like you said. And then uh, the film, I think one day after he posted or two days, it was trending on Amazon Prime. It was the number two movie. Yeah, uh, awesome. Totally. You know, not, you know, not the second uh, documentary rank. It was like there was a Will Smith movie, I Am Legend. Mm. And then we were number two as the uh, most trending films that week. That's awesome. And like how I found out about the films, the uh, comedian Sebastian Maniscalco, he actually talked about it on his podcast and he put a, a thing up on Facebook. Now, I think it's just so awesome now that you're getting these kind of uh, uh, people talking about your film that like have a huge following and they're getting people to see your film as well. And um, look, it is, it's just so fantastic. I can talk to you, Jim, yeah. about this film because I'm a huge Rocky fan. I was saying to you off air that as, as we're speaking, I've got my – Rocky one poster behind me. I'm drinking from my Rocky four coffee, coffee cup. I'm a, this film is something that changed my life as well, both as a, a film critic and also, you know, in my pursuit of like boxing and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it really is a, the type of movie that encompasses a lot of wide ranges. And it's great to see Mike doing well. It's great to see the film doing well. And uh, Jim Toscano, I thank you very much for your time today. And for everyone out there, remember you can watch the film online. There's actually a website thepretendermovie.com and there you can find all the links for it and for all the people in listening in Australia you can check out this film on Tubi T-U-B-I uh, it's a free um, uh, movie distributor uh, service check it out um, and Jim Toscano I thank you very much for your time today and once again congrats with the movie thank you I really appreciate it thank you very much it's been great <laughs>